Hello! In my last video, you saw me building this Mian. I am going to wire that into a Raspberry Pi 3A+. Now the intention is that once it's wired in, my kids are going to program it. I'm going to get uh, Helena to do it some scratch. Jonathan may be on the Raspberry Pi and do a bit of Python. But of course, before they get to play with it, I play with it first. Before I'm actually able to wire this thing, uh, it was worth finding out where I could get the wiring. And uh, the best place I found out, in fact, was pinout XYZ. So they've got the pinout for the Mi Arm Pi. Now I'm not using the Mi Arm Pi board, this is just a bare Mi Arm. And I'm going to do my own wiring with one of these and a bunch of these cables. That's female to female because the Pi has got male headers and the robot's got male headers and female to male so I can plug them into there. But I needed to work out what those pins were and uh, this has uh, handily got a grid here plus five volt left servo, grip servo, ground base servo and right servo. It's also handily got and suggested some pin numbers over to the left there so I'm going to follow the same pin numbering scheme as well and I will put links to this in the video description. So the first thing I want to do is the servo motors need six volts and ground and they need to share ground with the Pi. Without them sharing a ground I wouldn't be able to make any sense of any signals on the signal wires but I need six volts or five volts to come from an external source. I'm not going to try and power the motors from the same place that I power the Pi. Um, my thinking for now because it's on my desk is to have a uh, USB powering this and maybe a small battery box for that. I've already stuck the headers in here so on the two that were marked as 5 volt and ground I've stuck in a female to male and I've got a red for 5 volts and a brown for ground. I'm only really going to want one to go from that ground to the Pi's ground. The main reference I'm actually needing is that of the Raspberry Pi. That's so I can wire these pins up here in. We have base servo is red, orange is left servo, Yellow is the grip and green is the right. Base servo goes into pin seven. So we've got one, three, five, seven. And yes, sometimes you have to count pins. Gee, if you don't want to count pins, uh, something I find incredibly useful to have around is one of those. And uh, this happens to be Pi Maroni Pico Hat Hacker but uh, there are plenty of places with their own versions of such a device. Uh, and you'll notice there's both numbering schemes on this diagram over here. We've got the BCM numbers, which is what we're going to use when we uh, program it, because the GPIO, we'd like to settle on the BCM standard. We've also got the actual pin number, which is uh, relative to the header, where power is pin 1. For the right servo, 11. Left servo, oh, this is nice and easy. Okay, so they're skipping one every time. 15, and grip servo is 19. It was the case that you wanted to have some intermediate board to handle PWM, square wave stuff, coming out of the Raspberry Pi and going to the servo motors. However, as far as I know, they're doing something sneaky to the GPIO pins. Very handy for servo control. Will it work? Don't know. I have to get some code going. Oh, I nearly skipped one really important step. See, I found a diagram on the internet. Actually, I do trust pinout XYZ, uh, but I think I should make it clear that you still want to test it out. The diagram shows that the bottom left of that grid should be ground, and then the top left um, of that should be 5 volts. So we can actually cross that off with a multimeter. I'm going to put my multimeter in continuity mode. Power it on, just make sure it's good to go. And what I'm going to do before I turn anything on or apply power anywhere, if you look at these male headers, they've got a contact that's just exposed. And we can see it on all of them. And so that contact there 
that brown lead is going to what I've assumed to be ground on this. If you look at the side of the robot arm, we've got the three pin connector from a servo motor going into this connector here, connecting there, and we've got these pins underneath. So if I place one side of continuity here. It doesn't matter whether I use the red one or the black one across these because I'm only checking that it's going across. Then this one should also be ground. You do the same with the 5 volts. So we go to the red one there that's 5 volts and we trace that red one here down to the middle line which is 5 volts which means the other lines there are definitely signal. And if we've gotten the signal ones messed up, messed up okay it might mean the wrong servo motor moves yeah that's a chance i'm willing to take i have a raspberry pi powered up and plugged in i have a uh, little pcb power supply um, i didn't really look at what current it's capable of so it might not be big enough for the job uh, i've got some batteries here connected to that via this cigar connector so when i turn those on you can see a slight movement in the arm. I've also got a terminal here where I am connected to the Pi. Let's see, if I do Python, a oh, wrong Python. Let's, uh, let's do Python 3. Has this got the right tools installed? Let's see, GPI 0. No, so Python 3 dash m pip install GPI 0. GPI 0 is a Python library that gives you access to those GPIO pins and lovely there we are so Python 3 import GPIO 0 and hmm what is the syntax for motors GPIO 0 we are looking at the output devices so angular servo allows you to interact with the servo motor with a calibrated angle don't yet have a calibrated angle. This is the servo class. Let's try initializing one of these servos. Base equals GPI zero dot servo four. We're going to leave this at all the defaults because the defaults are probably good enough, right? PDLM is not supported on pin GPI four. I think we're missing some library here to do the smart DNA uh, DMA stuff. So I need to go and do a little bit of reading. Sometimes when building robots and tinkering with code and engineering, there's a whole lot of trying stuff out that just isn't yet going to work because you haven't quite found the right recipe. Don't be disheartened. This is where you keep going, you keep trying, you keep looking. So a bit more reading later, and I found we've got a couple of different choices for this pin factory. So pin factory is a way that GPIO0 uses to communicate with the pins. And it looks like different factories have different capabilities. Now, I think we're using the native factory. And I'm thinking, well, one of these might be up to more. So rpi.gpio, apparently it's unsuitable for timing or real-time applications. Not too worried about that. No support for hardware to PWM. Pi GPIO, hardware time sampling. Mentions the Pi 4B. There's a Pi GPIO daemon. Now... I don't know if that means that when I run this, I have to start the daemon. That might make things complicated. Pip install pi gpio. Successfully installed. Oh, that imported. GPI0 device dot pin factory equals pi gpio factory. Oh, failed to connect. I need a pi gpio daemon. A pip uninstall pi gpio. The reason I'm going to remove that or uninstall that is so then I can use the system one that gets installed with it. We'll do a sudo apt get install pi gpio python3 pi gpio and with any luck it's been packaged such that there's a system daemon for it. System daemons automatically start when Linux like Linux on a Raspberry Pi starts and sit there and run in background. Sudo system control status pi gpio will enable will start it and it's alive python 3 import gpio 0 do that gpio 0 dot device dot factory equals pi gpio factory say servo equals gpio 0 dot servo 4 
base dot mid min oh hello ah let's do base dot value equals 0 0.7 oh if i import time do a little for loop do 0 10 base dot value equals 1n divided by 20 because of course we're trying to do 0 to 5 Still kind of jerky, right? So let's try 40. That's a little bit better. I don't know how smooth this goes. Say 100 and do that is n divided by, we'll say 200. And if I take the time range down, that's getting somewhere. We can tinker with that. 17 is right and 10 is gripper. Let's do 10. Gripper equals gpio 0 dot servo pin 10. Right equals gpio 0 dot servo 17. 15. So it's now kind of standing up. Let's do gripper dot min dot max. I could do with perhaps adjusting where that gripper is to left and I should probably they've called them left and right and I should probably call it elbow and shoulder because that kind of makes more sense to me left dot value equals 0 0.3 to see what's going to happen oh that one does something oh 15 which is BCM 22 BCM numbering remember left dot value equals 0 0.3 Oh, okay, let's see if we can clearly see what's going on. So if I set the left value, which is clearly the elbow, we get those movements. If I set the right value, I may regret this, but we'll try it. Right max, time dot sleep, right dot mid. Hey, that's all right. What about the left? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this... Uh, terminal right that's kind of acceptable as well okay what about the minimum so we have all degrees of freedom on this bot um, so the only thing I'm gonna have to change is I'm definitely gonna have to adjust this so if I do gripper dot min it's out here and that's way too far back and gripper dot max is not far enough in so at gripper.max I might need to uh, disassemble this gripper assembly just to get that in okay well I'm going to do that before the kids actually get to play with it I don't know if the PWM working this way is going to be available to the scratch environment but I can definitely make it available to the Python environment for Jonathan well I hope you can see I've got a functioning robot arm here. Yes, I've just got a little while true loop there. and I can stuff that on GitHub if you really like me to. Uh, it all clearly works. Okay, I'm going to stop that now. <laughs> that base clearly needs something to stabilise it. Perhaps the uh, battery should uh, sit on there to stop it. Um... Oh, that works. I'm going to stop that because it's drowning me out. I hope you've liked this. I'm going to put all the code and bits and bobs I've done with this on uh, GitHub so people can see the code. And if you like this sort of thing, uh, I highly recommend looking at my book, which is Learn Robotics Programming, and also the Raspberry Pi magazine, Magpie, where I'm doing a, a small article series on building low-cost wheel robots, where I build a tiny little lunchbox robot. Very cute. Uh, anyway, give me a thumbs up, uh, a like, and if you really want to hear more, subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you back, uh, where hopefully my kids are going to start writing code for this. And until then, don't forget, go make stuff and be awesome. Bye!